as I'm recording this video, yesterday was World Backup Day, which is the not so gentle reminder from resellers that you should really be buying hardware or services to back up your computers. Well, it just so happens that I also received my Synology RS-1221 yesterday, or RS-1221 Plus. So let's take a look at this thing and get my drives moved over from my DS-420 Plus. Hey, I'm Jerry, and a few weeks ago, I made a video about backing up your Macs using a Synology NAS. I went over the different options on how to do that with Synology, including using Time Machine or Synology's own solutions like Synology Drive. For that video, I was using a Synology DS420 Plus that Synology let me borrow for some testing, and I had planned to make a number of other videos using that. I ended up liking the Synology so much that it became my active storage, so I couldn't just do testing on it. Now that I have my brand new RS-1221+, Plus, I can move everything over and make a few more videos, so be sure to let me know down below if there's something you're interested in seeing about Synology. Now, if you're new to Synology, or NAS, NAS stands for Network Attached Storage. You can think of it as a big external hard drive that connects to your network, so that any device on your network, multiple computers or devices, can access them at the same time. These things are fancy boxes that come in different shapes and sizes that allow you to backup or store files and share files, photos or anything else. They can also run all kinds of other things depending on the device like virtual servers or media servers like Plex without needing to keep a separate computer powered on all the time. You can get a NAS with a single hard drive all the way up to 12 or more drives, but let me just say that you should not get a single drive NAS you always wanna have some kind of redundancy in case one of the drives fails. The NASs also come in different sizes and form factors like the DS420 Plus, which is made for a desktop or shelf placement, but there are also rack mount versions like this RS1221 Plus that I'll be installing in a rack that I have in my closet. There are a couple of reasons that I went with this specific RS1221 Plus for my use. Besides being able to fit in a small half depth rack, the ability to add up to eight drives with the possibility of expanding up to another four, the ability to add up to 32 gigabytes of RAM inside if I decide to run virtual machines or other services. It's got a PCI expansion port for future 10 gigabit ethernet if I choose, and it's fast and powerful enough yet efficient with the AMD Ryzen quad-core processor. My main use for this NAS is to be used as my backup storage and to backup all of my data offsite using the built-in hyper backup software and Backblaze B2 for my cloud-based backup storage. I'll be syncing my existing OneDrive data to the Synology along with all of my personal photos, video library, and of course, my YouTube video backups. I like to edit videos locally and backup to the Synology when completed. I'll also be using this for time machine backups for my family's computers and other devices, and as well as a simple Plex media server. Now, in case you're wondering, I don't plan on doing much Plex transcoding, which should be fine for this AMD CPU NAS, which does not itself contain any hardware decoding capabilities. But if a big Plex library is your thing, and you plan on building out a large library and streaming it from multiple devices at the same time, then there's gonna be better options out there than this RS-1221 Plus or something with the AMD processors. Something more like the DS420 Plus or the 920 Plus that has hardware decoding built in. In case you're wondering, there is no SSD cache option in this unit, which is not an issue for me and my use. Speed is not my goal, with my focus being more on the expansion for backups or you know, just being out of the way. If you think you need SSD caches, again, you can look at the previous ones I just mentioned, or even the desktop version of this AMD box, the DS1621 Plus or the 1821 Plus. Opening up the box to the RS1221 Plus, you will find the NAS itself, and an accessory box containing power for both standard plugs and a C13 to C14 plug. There's also mounting screws for three and a half inch drives and two and a half inch drives, and a quick install guide. The 1221 Plus itself is pretty plain, and just like most enterprise type servers or gear, if you've seen them. On the front, you have the power button, the alarm mute button, the drive status lights, and of course, the eight drive bays. On the back side, you have the PCI expansion slot, two USB-A ports for a UPS or external drive, four one gigabit ethernet ports, a serial management port, and an eSATA port for connecting the expansion unit. Okay, so after reading through Synology's documentation, the migration from the DS420 Plus to the 1221 Plus should be pretty straightforward. I should just need to move each drive one at a time 
from this one to that one, keeping them in the same order, like slot one to slot one, slot two to slot two, etc. I'm not gonna lie, this does feel a little bit nerve wracking, moving the data over, just hoping that everything's gonna go just completely perfectly. But I did make a full backup using Hyper Backup, so I do have a copy of all of the data that's sitting on here, just in case something goes wrong. Unfortunately, with the 1221 Plus, I need to actually install the drives to the caddies with screws, compared to the simple toolless design of the desktop versions. And if you're curious, I'm actually using the Seagate Ironwolf 6 terabyte drives. These NAS drives are built to withstand extra vibrations that can occur in a multi-disc environment or a box like this. They come in different sizes, of course, to I think less than one terabyte all the way up to 14 or 16 terabytes. So I'm going to move all of these drives over to this 1221 plus, and then we'll turn it on and see what happens. All right, so all of the drives are now moved over to the Synology NAS. I got my laptop ready to go. We're gonna turn this thing on and it's probably gonna get a little bit noisy for a few minutes while I turn this on. We're gonna turn this on, it's gonna boot up and then we'll connect to it with the computer and then we'll be able to go ahead and see if we can migrate the existing data into the new Synology. So let's see how loud this guy's gonna be. Yeah, it's, it's got a little bit of noise to it. So hopefully you can still hear me well enough over the fan speed. So this is gonna take just a couple of minutes to boot up and then we should be able to get started. All right, so we should be good. The Synology just beeped at me. So inside a web browser, we're going to go to find.synology.com and it should scan the network and find this on the network. So let's give that just a sec. All right, there we go. So I grabbed an IP with DHCP. We can see it's the RS1221 plus. We're gonna hit connect. I agree to the software licenses. Great, now, so it does see that I'm trying to move drives from a DS420 Plus over to the 1221 Plus. So I have this migrate button, we'll click that. I want to migrate and keep all of my data and most of the settings. So hopefully it'll keep all the settings I care about, I guess, I guess we'll find out. We'll click next. It's going to re-download and reinstall the operating system again onto those drives again should keep my existing data. So let's go and do that. And then that's gonna take a few minutes and then it's going to reboot and then we should be back. All right, so we're finally up and running. We are sitting at our login screen. So let's go ahead and log in and hopefully everything is there and working as expected. And this looks like my previous NAS. Go into control panel. Looks like the IP address is incorrect, so that did not carry over and probably because of my configuration on my router. Um, but we have doo -doo -doo -doo, network, our interfaces, so LAN is connected, of course. And then what we really care about is the storage. Is the storage healthy? So it sees all four of my drives. It's showing the whole volume is healthy. Shows everything healthy here storage pool, everything healthy. And that is the biggest piece. So great, so all of the drives were brought over, they were migrated. Are all of my files still here? Yes, all of my files are still here. Still have my OneDrive, my Plex, and my storage with all of my junk. So Plex and archive files and backups and da da da. So fantastic, everything is here. That's good news. And just wanna check my backups real quick. Here's my existing backup jobs backing up to cloud-based services, and this one's to a USB drive. And this isn't connected, obviously, at the moment, but I should be able to just continue my existing backup jobs and you know, continue where I left off. So that is awesome. All right, so my next steps are going to be to add an additional drive to have a total of five in here. And instead of expanding the storage for more space, I'm going to be adding redundancy and converting this to an SHR2 RAID which means I can withstand up to two drive failures in here without losing any data. Right now I have about 15.7 terabytes of capacity, usable capacity, which should be enough for me for a number of years of my video backups and everything else. So I just wanna be able to add redundancy. So if I do lose a drive, I have plenty of time to replace one. After all of that, I do have this third party memory that I got on Amazon, which I'll leave a link to in the description below. Synology only supports their own first party memory, but this is much cheaper and supposedly does not give any error messages about being incompatible. So fingers crossed it all works out and 
if I do see any issues, I can always reinsert the original factory memory. And just so you can see it, here is my new RS-1221 Plus racked and cabled in my closet. I think it fits really nice and it's tucked completely out of the way, which is where I want an appliance like this for my use. I'm hoping that this guy lasts a good five years or so before it's time to replace it. Would I recommend this version of a NAS, this rack mounted NAS? For most people, absolutely not. It's meant to sit in a rack and it's also loud. This belongs in an equipment rack or server room where noise is not an issue. For almost anyone, the DS models or desktop NASs are a much better option and function the exact same and run the same software. But what do you think? Do you have any Synology questions or are there any future videos that you'd like to see featuring Synology? Let's talk below. If you wanna see the three different ways that I can use a Synology to back up Mac computers, check out this video right over here. Hit the thumbs up button if you liked it. Hit subscribe if you want, and I'll see you next time.